What you guys got another video here for you 10 reasons you can't flash your motherboard BIOS and how to fix them. So if you're getting BIOS ID check error or something like this on your BIOS or maybe you can't flash your BIOS then we're going to go through some of the steps to try and fix this problem you might be having. So first off if you are receiving any sort of problems check the motherboard this will give you the motherboard revision on the bottom left hand corner of the motherboard. You can also find the motherboard socket and memory type on the motherboard and also you can find the motherboard's model number right in the center right here. So check the motherboard and get all the correct details. You can also get these from your Windows PC. If you type system information in the search and open up the system information uh, program, it's going to open up and you can now see the baseboard manufacturer, it tells us ASUS. We also have the baseball product, which is the model number of our motherboard. And what type of motherboard it is. We have the revision of our motherboard. And we can even tell what BIOS version we are running on that particular motherboard. All this information is super useful. And you need to write all this down. Because when you're searching for your BIOS, all of this needs to be exactly accurate otherwise it's not going to work let's have a quick word from today's video sponsor cd key sales if you're looking for cheap windows 11 pro oem keys then check out the links in the video description use my promo code capital b capital r 09 apply that to your order and get a 30 percent discount on all your purchases once you submit your order they will send you a key and you can then activate your version of windows just like you see on the screen so first off, go to the website and type in your motherboard manufacturer name, whether it be Gigabyte, Asus, MSI, ASRock, all the manufacturer's names. Do a search and open up this page. From here, you can then go for the products, their motherboard, and do a search for your particular motherboard make and model number and all that information we talked about earlier. You can search for it on their website. There's loads of information on here about what boards they have, it needs to be identical to the one you're using, otherwise the BIOS flash will not work. So you can see here, you can find your motherboard here. You can break it all down, or you can do a simple search in Google for that particular model, and it will take you to that page. So the first one is you're using the wrong BIOS file as to why you're getting that error code coming up. So double check the exact model, make and revision number, Make sure you're downloading the correct BIOS and make sure the file is for your specific motherboard and revision. That's really important. So let me just quickly show you here. So we're going to do a quick search here and you can see it gives us a list of all the motherboards they have. Now you've got this information, you can do a quick search through all of the lists of motherboards that Gigabyte or MSI or Asus or ASRock or all the other manufacturers that supply motherboards. What you're looking for here is the make and model number of your motherboard and make sure you get the right revision because if you use the wrong revision, the BIOS may be different and you can run into issues and it won't flash the BIOS. So as you can see, going through here, it's important that we get exactly the right one. So whether it be Wi-Fi edition or non-Wi-Fi edition or revision one or 1.2 or three or whatever it is, you need to get it exactly right. Once you know whether it's an ATX motherboard, a micro ATX motherboard, ITX motherboard, and so on, you can choose your particular model. This will take you over to the page where you can then download the correct BIOS for your particular motherboard. Okay, so let's move on to the next thing, which is uh, downloading your BIOS. So we're gonna go to this one here, and we're gonna choose the download so here we can see the version and we can see the size, the date, and we can see it's for our motherboard. Make sure all of that information is correct. And then you can download your version of BIOS right here. Once you download that to your computer, you can have a USB flash drive ready. And I'll show you how to prep that and get that ready for your installation of your new BIOS. So another issue could be the BIOS file isn't properly extracted. You need to extract the BIOS file from inside this zip file. So we're going to extract all here and put it into a folder. So you should see extracting right here. And sometimes you have to copy all of the files onto the USB flash drive and these have to be renamed either .cap, 
.bin or .rom or whatever it is you're using. There will be a document in here, a PDF file, which will sometimes tell you exactly how to flash your BIOS on your motherboard. So always check the manual. It will give you all the information that you need on how to flash your BIOS. So all this information is listed right here. So like I said before, you need to make sure your BIOS file name is been renamed correctly. So let me quickly show you that right here. So Gigabyte normally use .bin, Asus use .cap, MSI use .rom, and so on. So here you can see before running the USB BIOS flashback tool, please rename your BIOS file, and it will tell you right there. Sometimes some motherboard manufacturers will have a little tool inside there which you can run. So we're going to extract these files right here into a folder, and what we're going to do is we're going to quickly take a look inside you can see there's a rename uh, file here so we can click on this and it will rename our bios file to the name that it wants it to be renamed so you can click on this right here press enter and it will rename that file to uh, tgb 650 pw.cap that's what it's going to rename it to and you can see it's done that right here so make sure that is correct otherwise you're going to run into problems the next problem will be your drive needs to be FAT32. When you format, you might not see FAT32 available here, and that's because you only have NTFS and XFAT. If you want to get FAT32 and you're in this predicament, you can download a program like this and just click on the image and it will download that program. This is going to allow you to format your flash drive into FAT32, which is recognized by your BIOS. If you try to use NTFS or XFAT, formats are not recognized and it won't work. So download the application, open it up, and all you need to do here is make sure you've got the right USB flash drive selected right here, and you can click on Start, and it will then prep that drive and make sure it is FAT32 ready for your BIOS file. So let's go ahead and get this ready. So I'm going to click Start, click OK here, and it will then get the drive ready and make it FAT32 for us. And now that's done, what we can do is now copy over our file that we've just renamed onto that USB flash drive. And you should be ready to use this to flash your BIOS. So all you need to do is copy over the file right here. Now, whether you've got an MSI motherboard, a Gigabyte or Asus, it will be .rom, .bin or .cap. Once that file's copied over, that now USB flash drive is ready to flash your BIOS. Next, what you want to do right here is make sure that you have the manual. Download the manual and this will give you all of the information on how to flash your BIOS. Because if you're not using the right flashing method, it's not going to work. So we have BIOS flashback, we have Q flash, we also have Easy flash and M flash. There's a bunch of different ones that you need to use. So you can check the manual and it will give you all of the information about the BIOS flash methods that your motherboard uh, supports. And you can read through this. This manual has pretty much every bit of information you're going to need to know about your motherboard. So always keep this handy. So go through here and have a look and there'll be some information about how you can flash your BIOS in the user manual for your particular motherboard. Now, even if you've lost the box and the manual that come with it, you can always go online to the support page and download the uh, PDF file version of that. And you can see right here, it tells us how to get into the BIOS and how to set up a Q flash for this particular board here. Another reason why it might not be working is the USB drive is not plugged into the correct port. On this motherboard, you can see there's a designated a USB port to use and there's also a little indication light that you can watch when it's flashing the BIOS. So if you're using that method, make sure you're in the right port, otherwise it might not work correctly. If you're still having issues after this, it may be the fact that you've got a corrupted or incomplete BIOS file. So to re-download the BIOS file, go to the website and download it again and recreate the USB flash drive ready for flashing, otherwise it could be an issue with that file. Also, another reason is that you might be already on the very latest BIOS version. If you are, then there's not much point in flashing that BIOS because you already have 
the latest BIOS for that motherboard. And one last important thing is power interruptions. If you're prone to power interruptions or blackouts or power cuts or insufficient power to the PC, you want to make sure you use a UPS system to make sure you've got good power to that PC because if it interrupts the power to the PC during the flashing process, you can run into issues. So make sure you've got good stable power to that PC before you carry out any sort of BIOS flash on that PC. Anyway, I think that's going to be about it. That's just about everything we've covered here. So maybe wondering what to do if your BIOS is already corrupted. Well, if it failed a BIOS flash and it bricked your motherboard, uh, use your BIOS flashback if your motherboard supports it. If not, you're going to need to contact some sort of PC repair shop to fix that issue for you. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Have a lovely weekend and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.